Ag PhD full episodes and more are now available on Acres TV, the newest ag platform connecting you to fields of information. Look for us on watchacrestv.com. During our Farm Basics time each week, we talk about some of the things that we deal with as farmers. And if you're a non-farmer, we want to try to communicate this with you, just some of the challenges that we go through. Well, one of the biggest issues that we commonly have, quite frankly, in almost any farm, it's soil erosion. Back 100 years ago in the United States, and heck, back even 50 years ago, we had major erosion problems across the country. Now we've solved a lot of those issues, so we want to talk about some of the things that we go through to reduce soil erosion. All right, first of all, when it comes to erosion, what we're talking about here is soil leaving the field. And there's a, a couple of really obvious ways that it could leave the field. One is wind. Anytime you have to plant a new crop, well, you've got soil that's exposed, and if the wind would happen to blow really hard, it could blow away some of the soil right on top of the ground. And then the other way is rain or water erosion. If you have flooding that could wash away some soil or you have just a really heavy rain and you've got hilly ground, you could lose a little bit of soil with the water that way. Now, there are some people out there that I hear from time to time saying, well, farmers can totally eliminate erosion issues if they just put all their ground into permanent crop. Well, that's great, except for the fact that we need to eat. So we've got to raise food, and in order to do that, we're going to have to stir up the soil a little bit, raising some annual crops. So we can't just put in permanent perennial crops on every single acre. So let's talk about how do we reduce erosion when we are even tilling the soil sometimes, using annual crops, having multiple crops per year, what do we do to reduce erosion? Well, one thing that is a big advantage that farmers can utilize is last year's crop residue. For example, say you raised corn. Well, you harvest the grain out of the field, but what happens to the leaves and stalk that's left from last year? Well, farmers chop it up, leave it on the ground. That can provide some protection from wind and rain uh, and keep the soil safely underneath some stalks. Now, obviously you're gonna have to move them out of the way to plant your next seed, but you can do that uh, kind of on a minimum level to try to leave as much residue out there to protect as possible. And we have some relatively hilly ground. That's what we used to do on most of our acres, but now we've got a big dairy next to us and they need silage corn. So they cut the corn off the whole plant, everything, they take it all off the field, well that really exposes our soil. So what we do immediately after they come through with the silage cutters is we seed a cover crop. We really like oats because it grows very quickly and it can survive in pretty cool temperatures. So that's been really nice for us using a cover crop. Well, the other thing Brand had mentioned, stirring up the soil, doing some tillage. Another option that farmers have is just doing minimal tillage. Now that could be just one pass across the whole field, but barely moving any soil, or it could be something like strip till, and that's another practice that we've adopted on our farm, where we're just tilling up maybe eight inches wide every 30 inches for a row of crop, and then we just plant that crop right in that little tilled area and leave everything not tilled in between. So for our farm, just like most farms, we are conscious every day of what we are doing with the soil. It's our livelihood. We don't want soil to erode because what is eroding is the top part of soil, that top eighth of an inch, quarter inch. It is nutrient rich. It is great for producing crops. We wanna leave that in our field and leave it in place. So we have a number of different tactics we'll use and other farmers will use to try to hold soil where it is and reduce soil erosion. Hey, one last thing, Brian, one myth that I'd like to dispel is just if you see a river and it looks a little dirty, the initial thought is, well, it must be ground that washed into the river from a farm. But think about rivers. They're moving all the time. A few years back, I had a chance to go to a Mississippi River Museum, and they had documented that the riverbed itself had moved more than a mile because they'd found old river boats way out into fields a mile or even a little more away from where the river's at today. So rivers are always moving, they're eroding off the, the banks, that dirt falls into the river and that's what you see a lot of times when you see dirty water in a river. Yeah, I don't see any riverbeds made of steel or cement or anything else. They're made of dirt. 
and the dirt is going to move when the water hits it. So yes, most of the dirt that's in rivers, that's soil that has come from the river cutting more of the land right next to the river. Well, we don't want our soil to leave our fields, but one thing I wish could leave our fields is weeds. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 